Good morning, it is November 12th, and I'm going to try and push up one more video before I go up and treat patients. Uh, today's topic is foods. What is safe to eat? A lot of people want to know, what should I eat, what shouldn't I eat? And really what they're looking for, what they're asking for is, do you have a plan? Do you have a list? Do you have a brochure? Do you have something I can read and memorize and, and go by? And what I find over the last 11 years is too complicated, too many rules, too hard to remember, people get overwhelmed and eventually they quit. So what I have put together over my laptop is just a few notes to help us kind of breeze through a lot of information. First thing I recommend to a lot of people and they get surprised or shocked by is I tell them do not diet. Don't diet. Never diet. No more diets. Not well, not again. I don't care if it's South Beach, Atkins, uh, mucus free, Yugoslavian diet. I, I don't care which one it is. I don't care how new it is. I don't care if they saw it on TV or the world's biggest loser or whatever it is. I don't care. Don't diet. Because what happens is after you stop doing these extreme things people will start to do is they quit. And when they quit, they regress. When they regress, they gain all the weight back. And they don't just gain the weight back. They gain more. And they go into what's called metabolic resistance. Metabolic resistance to your body is the same as insulin resistance is to a diabetic. So your body becomes more and more immune to losing weight. makes it harder and harder and harder for you to lose weight. So if you want to lose weight at all, Either you don't start and you stay where you're at, which is a bad choice, or the worst choice is you go through a diet. The best choice is to make a lifestyle change, which people don't like hearing because they think there's a lot of commitment and it's very hard. And I walk my patients through each and every step, starting with one small thing they can do, and we build on that. Anyway, I like simple, I like easy, I like fast, and so if we can do that, here's, here's where we're going to go. Um, my rules and guidelines on what to not eat or eat. Here we go. Number one, if you got more than five ingredients, you might want to think about not eating it. If it's got 20, 25 ingredients like a Yoplait, it's terrible, not just toxic, bad. And if you ever want to ask me why, please write, email, or call, or show up and ask me. Um, if you can eat your food next year, you shouldn't eat it at all. Uh, if you just think about what's been done to it, the effects of what was done to it, and what it did to the nutritional content, no food grown naturally should be eaten next year. Unless you canned it, and you actually knew how high to heat it, you just want to watch out for the processing. That's the biggest question. What did the processing do to my food, and what does that do to me? And what does that do to my health, and how much is that going to cost me later? Uh, the next one is, do you crinkle it when you open it? If you have to crinkle it, and it's under pressure, and it's full of aluminum, um, again, too much has been done to it. It can't be that grand for you. Um, next one, how long does it take me to cook it? If it takes me two minutes in my microwave to cook it, it's not that great for me. That's the short and easy one to that. I'll be doing a video on what does my microwave do to my food. Um, can you pronounce the ingredients in your food? There's a simple one. My daughter can pronounce all the ingredients in all my food in all my whole house. And she could do that when she was 5 and 6. So if you can't, when you're 20, 25, if you can't tell me what um, sodium benzoate does to your food, you might not want to have a whole bunch in your mouth. I know what it does, but the question is, do you? Have you looked it up? And do you know the implications and the costs? Um, if your grandparents, this is one of my favorites, if your grandparents couldn't have found it in their grocery store, you probably don't want to eat it. So the grocery stores of the 1920s were a lot simpler, a lot cleaner, a lot healthier, and if you notice, they had a whole lot less diseases. Um, my new favorite one we created this year was, if you can't drink the water from the country that it was grown in, why are you eating the food there? Think about the regulations, what they were allowed to do, the food that we can't even do in our country. Why are our avocados two for a dollar? Why are our mangoes, you know, 89 cents? And, what does it mean when it says grown in Chile and Argentina and, and Mexico and all that? I mean, am I just against the country? No, I'm against what they allow in the country and how it's brought into our country and, and how we eat that. If you think the FDA is overly concerned about what's done to that food versus the price of food, you're absolutely backwards. But if you don't believe me, just eat the way you like for a while and see what it does for your body. Uh, let's see, what's next? We are designed, quite simply, whether you're an atheist, a Christian, whether you're Hindu or Buddhist, it doesn't really matter. We are simply designed, and that we can all agree on. We are designed to eat things that are naturally grown. So if it's got roots, if it's got a plant it grew from, if it could free-range eat, we're supposed to eat it. If it has been genetically modified, if it is a hybrid, if there's something done to the genome to it, if it's got in vitro seminization, if it's been crossbred, if it's got fertilizers and pesticides and herbicides, we're going to stick away from all of those arguments 
Or we're going to say, if it's been adulterated significantly, you might want to think, what does that process again do to my food? And over time, what does that do to me? So it isn't, can we produce a better cow faster or a chicken in 28 days? Or it isn't about what we can do. The question is, what does that do to that food? What does that food do to me? That's the point I'm picking on. I'm not picking on industry. I'm picking on us and what we're supposed to eat. So again, real simple rules. So whether it was made, food should have been the same today as it was made 2,000 years ago. You know, yes, we can have some innovation. Yes, I can have a garden. Should I have to grow my food? No. But you just want to have a mentality of how you're looking at food to figure out is it healthy or not. So when Wells Blue Bunny says you have fat-free ice cream, is that really that great for you? These rules are going to kind of help you walk through that. And when they take the fat out, what they put in there, that's one thing people don't ever ask. If you look, it's carbs, and that's what makes you fat. But people never read that. They just want to see a fat-free label, and then they want to have a double portion because they think, surprisingly, it's good for me. However, it's not, but they didn't want to read that far. Um, simply put, over time, we've become more educated, more savvy, more technologically capable. I mean, we drive our combines with GPS, and we don't even have to steer in the new combines. Um, but we've also become more sick. And we've also spent more in healthcare than we've ever spent. And our quality of life is going down. If that doesn't frighten you, I'm not sure really what I could say that would. And I'm not trying to frighten you. I'm just trying to lay out the facts and say that some of this evolution that we've created in our industry isn't bringing us health. It's bringing us cheaper foods and people like that. But we're sicker. Um, most people think you are what you eat. You're not. It's what can your body do with what you've given it. So if you've given it genetically like modified whatever... Can my, it was my body designed to process that? If you've given it free range this versus feedlot that, the question is, was my body designed what's in that food, what made that food, and what can my body do with it? And the last question, which is the most important question, is, does my body need to do something with that food? So the body's always looking for, in the digestive system, what's in there that I need based on my lifestyle. So if people think they are what they eat, they're mistaken. That gives the body the opportunity to make them what they need to live under the constraints they're living under. But you're not what you eat. If you're eating calcium, magnesium, and vitamin D, which will be a whole other video coming up on osteoporosis, and how to build bone density, and what should your lifestyle be, and what type of calcium is better for you, we'll be making one of those. But the question isn't, do I have osteoporosis? The question is, what do you need? Um, don't get overwhelmed. Don't get freaked out. Make one choice, each one at a time. Have a great day. Make a good choice.